All right, so let's get started on these blocks. First, we're going to modify this file a little bit for diversity and for testing reasons. So we have uh, the original copy still here, and we can also modify things in another file and work with it. We've already created this file, and that's the block grid. So we want to include this in here, but we want to include it uh, only for or only when we want it to be included. So there's a specific command, it's not command, but option that we can throw in the URL and that'll basically open up the blocks versus no options and it'll open up the rest. So here's a little bit of trick with PHP. Uh, this is also a bit of a tip between languages that we're doing. This is how we drop PHP into our code. So you're going to see a lot of funky play with these uh, these question marks uh, and less than signs and greater than signs. So you're going to see this right now and I will explain why. But just remember that we are plugging in server processing at these locations. This is the server working. The rest is just the website itself. So the server, we want to make sure that if it receives a certain request from us, so we're going to be using something we know, the if function. <clears throat> so if it receives a certain request, let me just close this for formatting reasons. Uh, we want to load the blocks or we want to basically, uh, yeah, we're going to require includes body uh, block grid uh, PHP. Okay. So if something is true that we will load the blocks grid which is empty at the moment but what we want to do is create the control so here's where we actually use something available in PHP the get request is a specific way to get information <coughs> from another page or from any uh, URL basically by storing it in something called an array an array is a set of values separated by commas just a list of values and what that does is it gives us the ability to ask for a specific name in this case uh let's call it uh mode and we're gonna test to see if the mode is set to testing so this is a good way to organize a little bit so if that's the case we open up uh, require or we, we require this uh, bit of code here now we can also control the rest what if we open it up and we don't want the rest so I'm going to create an else statement uh, for those not familiar with these yet there are some ways to or articles online you can look at them but basically if the first situation doesn't happen the second one will now the trick here is that I'm going to close this else a little bit before uh, I actually or after I uh, close the uh, the PHP because I want the rest of this else to be the code in the next space so everything underneath here so I'm going to basically try and see if this tabbing will lead me to the correct tab at the end it has not I basically have to go before the footer so it's a pretty big space big space let's see this has to be at the end of it and then the container so this is when i will go back into the php processing so i'm going back to the computer or the server and i'm going to say i'm going to end my else right here and that's all i have to do so yes it is interesting and tricky but basically we are stating that everything between this curly brace and the previous brace that we started up at the top will load only if this situation is not true in the same way we're loading a file in this location if it is true so it's actually going to do the same thing it's just going to copy and paste the contents of the file right in here in this location and then it'll ignore the else and continue on without the rest of the code uh, or vice versa so let's test it out we're going to go ahead and click save uh, we'll go ahead to the end one thing we have to do is we have to make sure that we do use the index PHP in our URL and to call this get request or to send this data, we simply put the question mark at the end of our URL. We put the variable name mode that we've dedicated to it and we say equals testing and press enter. Perfect. So it's empty. Obviously, there is really nothing now other than the nav bar and the footer uh, because the contents of the block grid is completely and utterly empty. So that's OK. The first thing I noticed when modifying this, though, is that we don't have to follow this particular process exactly. So I'm just going to grab this code. 
uh, meaning that I don't have to do container and row. I just need the code in here and that'll suffice uh, for a little bit more dynamics. So I'm going to copy one of the blocks in here. Refresh. There we go. So we're started on our way to actually modifying and customizing this page. Uh, the one thing I am noticing it's overlapping at the top. So essentially there is a little bit of a need for those little extra pieces there for the row. Or maybe the container. So here's what we'll do. Since the blocks themselves will be contained in another space, let me simply put div class container and div here. Uh, first, let me check if this fixes the alignment problem. Oof, not so much. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. It does. It actually creates the space. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to grab my block again. Now we see that there's some plenty of padding around it. And in here, I'm going to, of course, drop in some PHP. Uh, of course, again, require. Uh, or in this case, since a page will depend on the pieces in there, you can always do include uh, and then have an if and else statement on the other side to test whether you're including it or not, or even on this side before you include it. Uh, for now, I'm just going to use the require. So what I'm going to do now is just go to includes body uh, blocks and I will create profile block since it doesn't exist yet. I will drop in real quick and create it so I don't forget. So profile block.php. Copy my block in here. <clears throat> Refresh. And wouldn't it be nice if we just went on going forward without any errors? And look, it's the same exact mistake I've done before. Uh, block grid. Yes, it is. I did not close my PHP. So that's a habit that's really hard to get out of, but do your best. So now refresh, but luckily it's super small detail. Yeah, well, good thing it's just a tiny little issue. Uh, we may need to modify some of the flexibility. Notice how the words are all weird right here. However, we've included our first block and we just basically include as many of these as we want. So here's where the automation takes place. We can use include instead of require because it should only let us include it once. No, I can actually do it multiple times. So now we can actually make a program that prints out blocks first Well, as we basically work forward uh, when we make it more uh, automated but you'll see that this is really what's happening here we are creating the ability to use smaller sets of code to actually create uh, the pieces and the functionality of the whole so this gives us a lot of flexibility and a lot of ability to expand in the future so we can actually go much further and we will into the actual block structure uh, just because of my ADD to this silly way of programming. I'm going to organize before I begin. Perfect. Okay, so let's find some patterns with our blocks. This is the code for the block and we know that most HTML elements need to begin and they need to end. So since basically if we look at our uh, body, all of these block grids that are full start like this. So there's a dash unit. Uh, there's another dash unit. It doesn't highlight it since the mail blocks in the middle there. So all dash units essentially represent, there we go, another dash unit, uh, represent our uh, blocks or our blocks beginning at least. So what we're going to do next is go into our profile block, grab this, and now here's what we want to do. We want to basically first copy it. I'm going to copy it just in case I get lost in extra uh, steps. But I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go into block components and start creating two files. The first one is block func. And the second one is block construct. There is a difference between the two because one will actually process information while the other one will be a standard for the way they are visually represented. 
represented. So the construct is that visual representation. So I've copied that code and I want to actually make PHP print it automatically. Uh, so here's how we can do this, not using required. This is a little bit of a different process and we're going to be using something called functions. These functions will handle these sets of code a little bit like how our requires uh, imports those sets of code. Of course, we can go into the process of making our required functions, but for big chunks, that's fine. For smaller pieces, we want to make sure these are functions that are controlling these, because functions can actually be a lot more dynamic than the include or the require. They can modify the actual block based on the purpose. That's what we want to do in the end. So first, grab the beginning, go into our block construct, we will create a function, well, of course, first PHP. Notice that if you begin a file with the PHP and you don't end it, you will continuously be in PHP mode. And since this is going to be a full set of functions that will give us uh, a ton of different ways to organize our blocks, we don't quite need to end uh, the actual PHP tag. Sorry, it's a little hard to talk while I actually type. So here's what we're going to do. I've copied it already to set it up, but echo is a function, just like how the previous functions we're making, but it's a built in function already made inside of PHP, and it prints straight to our browser. So we're going to use this echo function, or in fact, we're going to use something else, we're going to use return. But really, for now, I'm going to use an echo. And with the echo, I'm going to use single quotes to create a space. Uh, should I do this? Ah, actually, let's do this. This is a bit more uh, nice. All right, so what I've done here is I've created a special process. Uh, I'm not sure how compatible it is with the old versions but essentially anything in between these two lines is what I've directed it to be keep in mind when I write HTML and it turns to yellow it's not the word that matters it's the fact that you begin and end with it I can change this to query as if I'm doing a and uh, my SQL query as long as I end and begin with the same set of strings it'll recognize the beginning and the end. So what we're really doing is setting up some space to actually use the code that we want to print. So in this case, since it's HTML, I am dubbing it HTML. And maybe keep this to the end. So it's a little more organized. <coughs> Perfect. So this is our first function block. And it's a little tricky to use this. It's no different than using quotes. Uh, it's actually a lot more dynamic because now PHP has a larger role in here. Uh, so maybe I'll use this in the future. But right now, since I'm only just printing, let's go ahead and just put this between single quotes and you'll see exactly the difference. All right, so notice first, the single quotes gives us no color coding of the HTML like we would expect it um, so it's not as nice to look at but it still contains it and I've given myself this space you don't have to have this space like this you could easily just remove all space and have it like this <coughs> which may look neater uh, but in this case I can't see in the glance what the components that are made are so all I'm gonna do is keep it like this for organization so I can see the pieces now, since every block begins with these, well, there should be a process to basically end it. And it's just closing those two divs out. So really, I'm just gonna grab this here, grab this here. And notice, if you can copy instead of type, always take that opportunity. Especially when we're going from one function to another, just make sure you do the Required modifications. We can't have a function with the same name, so I have to make sure I do change the function name if I copy it or purposely name it a different name just so it doesn't copy another. Okay, so we've got the beginning and the end of the block, so let's go ahead and do the next step. So we expect everything to work fine. So here's the fun part. This is where we go into some errors and I'll do it on purpose because it's always fun to learn what happens. So we've actually created our profile block it's accessible. 
meaning it's right there. And I have created my block construct area and I've got these functions ready to go. So let's go ahead and replace this with our PHP tags. And I'm going to do start block. And that's how we call that function we created. And since it's just another area there, I can just go here and call this end block. So we expect this to work. The functions obviously exist and everything is going mighty well on our side. What happens? Issues. Uncaught. Call to undefined function, start block. Okay. So this is when you see call to undefined function, something has not been linked correctly. It's undefined, but we have defined it, which means that that file isn't actually linked to our page yet. We have created it, we've structured it, but we haven't included this file anywhere. So let's go to our body and actually include it. We're gonna include it in the very top next to nav. <coughs> Uh, since essentially we need these loaded before our blocks begin. Of course, it depends on the block. Uh, well, for PHP, that's fine because it's linear. JavaScript is a lot more different than what we're doing here. So I'm going to go to includes body. And where did I save that? Blocks. Block construct.php. And let's go ahead and just also grab. Uh, if you use VS Code, Alt Shift Down gives you a second copy of that line you're currently on. And I'm going to do block funk as well just to get that set up with the other functions. Uh, and oh, I've missed something block component. You'll find the techniques that are good for you. I like to copy and paste whenever I can because it removes human error and I am human and I error. Okay, so this is actually going to get our function set up. So now if you refresh, we've actually included these functions, but something else happens. Fail to open stream, no such file directory. So let us double check our path. So includes body block component. Oh, this was my old structure. For the tutorial, I'm actually doing it even more organized than how I've currently set it up. Okay, so it's actually in block component instead. There we go. <clears throat> so now the functions are loaded. They're acting correctly. They're inputting that specific set of code that gives us the block. Now, if of course you haven't played around with some errors or figured out what's going on when something goes wrong, uh, where did that go? profile block. So what happens if we remove this part, the starting part, refresh. So it, content is still there, but it's not contained because remember that the main uh, beginning contains this into that three grid. Otherwise it's just spread out all over the place. So that's really what made that block in the first place. Cool. We have to just make sure that we continue the pattern. Uh, as we take stuff apart, we will start testing it and seeing whether it needs to be manipulated or it can just be copied and pasted, quote unquote, like we've done. So in the next tutorial or the next video, we're going to go into a little bit more details and some shortcuts uh, to continue expanding on this functional idea.